Our next guest competed with nine other contestants to try and become the new host of the Science Channel show Mythbusters. Take a look at this. Three quarter pressure test. Three. And despite all the arguments that the red team has been having so far, two. He seems to know how to get everyone back together and move them forward towards the goal. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. Uh, that was half pressure. It's gonna work. <laughs> that was great. Wow. Success. Wow. Look at <laughs> no that. No kidding. All right. She is bright. She is beautiful, and she is a next-generation scientist who's earned a doctorate degree in addition to a master's and a bachelor's in environmental engineering at the University of Florida. Welcome, Dr. Tracy Fanara. Great Thank to you. have you, you here. You know, you epitomize, and you are, are, you are the future of science. <laughs> So congratulations Let's hope for that. more women follow in Tracy's footsteps. I can't imagine any young girl who was watching Mythbusters and watching your journey not being inspired by you. That was the best part of being on the show, was having young girls doing their science fair projects reach out to me or parents that their kids were fans of the show. It was, I just couldn't believe the response. I was really flattering and just humbling. So great. Well, uh, let, tell us about some of the challenges that you had to, 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 to do on Mythbusters. For me, everything was a challenge. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a showing up was a challenge. Right, right. <laughs> I'm a design engineer, mm -hmm. so I'm really good with math and calculations, but uh, a lot of the building was new to me. Um, I caught on pretty quickly, though. I was pretty surprised about that. But the first challenge we had was building an ejector seat, which that was a pilot test that you just saw. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually got to drive the car and press the button to, to eject, eject that and, seat. And watch it eject. Now, for those who aren't familiar with Mythbusters, let's, let's lay down exactly what happened. There were two hosts of the show for many, many years. Yep. And this was a competition. It was called Mythbusters The Search. They were looking for two new people, but who have practical experience in science to host the show. And this was right. the competition to become the host. Now, you didn't make it, but how far did you get? I got pretty far. I was happy with, well, no one's really happy unless <laughs> you win. But, um, but I, was, I was surprised at how far I got just because of the quality of people that were there. Everybody was so bright and so good. Um, I was really, I was, I was a little nervous when I first got there and met everybody. I'm like, how, how am I even going to make it past the first week? Did you get a taste for television, though? Do you think this is something, a path you might want to go down in some other capacity other than Mythbusters? Myth <laughs> myth, myth <-busters? laughs> um, yeah, you know what's great about TV is the amount of people that you can reach. Mm. Mm. It's just reaching a broad demographic, and I'm so passionate about education and um, just inspiring uh, love for science. Well, what are you working on right now? Right now, I am the program manager of environmental health at Moat Marine Laboratory. So I look at uh, man-made and natural toxins um, and how they affect the environment and, in turn, how they affect us. So I now, design... If you don't know about oh, Moat, by the way, mm. Moat is a very interesting place and uh, it, it, you know you should google moat m-o-t-e because i did and i learned so much about what I've you're been doing there. and yeah you should visit yeah i, I know it's i haven't great. been there yet but it is a fantastic place it is incredible it really is we do a lot of um we're known for our shark research and we we're the first lab to actually regenerate coral in a lab and then have it acclimate in the natural environment wow. i mean we have just uh, that's important what we for the future of our amazing. planet. I know. If we don't save our oceans, we're doomed. I know. People don't realize how important the ocean is and how much oxygen we get from it. So, um, yeah, and that's, that's another thing why TV is so great is yeah. because it reaches people that aren't looking for science. You know, it, right. and they can learn in an entertaining way. Mm -hmm. And here you didn't, you know, you made it maybe halfway through the, uh, through the cycle of trying to become these hosts. But you inspired a lot of people, and apparently there was a huge reaction when you were voted off the island. If <laughs> right? Yeah, I was shocked at it. Uh, honestly, I didn't, I didn't realize how um, 
well liked I would be, well, I guess. Well, we're not surprised. I, I know. Do you have a Twitter feed by any chance? Yes, I did do. It, did it suddenly get a lot more followers? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, and actually, um, I gained more followers when I was eliminated than I did during the run of the there show because people sure. were so upset. Huh. Yeah, See, everything happens it. for a reason. Yeah. But you know what the bottom line is, and you said it at the very beginning, and I want to get into that a little bit more with you, is inspiring young women. There are so many uh, people who say they want to get more young women involved in STEM and, yeah. you know, science, technology, engineering, math. W what do you think the answer is? Is it more people like you reaching out and, and getting a broader base? I do. You know, the reason why I took the opportunity with Mythbusters, I knew it wasn't the perfect fit. But I took it because my um, my ten year old cousin came over the house and she was just idolizing these reality stars on TV that um, whose values were a little narcissistic, mm -hmm. a little um, a little, uh huh, yeah, just <laughs> you know, just different from what I would want for her, right? Um, and just having more people that these kids can look up to, that. Um, you know, as scientists, you think that they're nerds. You know, they think they have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. well, but but well, there is no... You just spell that myth <laughs> right there. You just Hallelujah. busted that myth. <laughs> well, thanks. Keep up the good work. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the Red Tide app that yeah. you're working on so we can yeah. all breathe a little easier. There you go. Next Dr. month. Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Dr. Tracy, thank you so much. We'll be right back with more daytime after this.